Okay, today we're gonna go ahead and fill in this hole. We're gonna fill in this hole. All right, cut, 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 cut. cut. No, no, no. Mo mo too serious. You gotta have more energy, more liven it up. Have some fun. All right, do it again. <laughs> today. Florida sun. It's too hot. And the only thing that makes it feel better is when we get subscribers. All right, today we're gonna show you how to make a patch if you've got a rust hole or if you wanna fill in a turn signal light. You might want to go for the cow look or put bullet lenses in it or anything. You know, filling an antenna hole, this will all apply to all that. I still like the cow look. I'm going one of these windows in my yeah, That's kind of cool. <laughs> I'm digging the cow look. <laughs> okay, I'm going to fill in this turn single hole right here. The, the two little bolt holes, I'm just going to weld them up. I'm going to show you a little technique to weld those up. They got a little bump in them right now, so I'm going to tap them down with the, the dolly and get it nice and flat. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, make a piece to fill in that hole. You don't want to just try to weld that one. That's a little bit much, but uh, I cut a blank out. But we're gonna get a little bit of a curve in this piece before we even cut that the rest of the way out. And what I do is, we'll hit it on the anvil here, but I got a ball peen and it's got a nice curve to the ball peen. Most ball peen hammers are like that, but check, because sometimes they're not. You can always sand one down. I do that all the time. We got like 10 ball peens in the shop, but if, I, if you hit it dead in the center, basically you're stretching the metal, especially if you hit it against something hard like this anvil here. So we just start tapping in the middle. This piece is gonna start curving. It's gonna actually thin out a little in the middle and give you a little curve. So go ahead and whack that a few times, see what we get. As you can see already, it's, it doesn't take a whole lot. Instead of one big hit, you know, a whole bunch of little hits is way bigger, better than one big hit. That looks pretty darn good right there. Actually, perfect. All right, go ahead and, being I can get to the back of this hole, we're gonna just hold it behind there and trace it out. Rob's gonna show you a technique that works really good when you can't get to the back of the hole. So, take that over to the bandsaw, we'll cut that out, but it's already got the curve in it, so it's gonna fit really good. Just cut the corners off real quick. If you don't have a bandsaw, you cut it with a grinder or however you wanna cut it. I have a piece of wood under mine, I use that because I got a hole underneath of the, the table. This thing is almost 100 years old. Okay, off to the sander. Pieces cut out, fits perfect. All right, the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna sand off the rust. Sand out inside the hole here. When you're welding, it'll make it weld so much easier if it's clean. I know sometimes you're stuck and you have to weld through some rusty stuff. Obviously, big welding helps a lot with that. But uh, the cleaner you can get it, the easier it'll be to weld, and the better fit you make, the easier it'll be to weld. So try to get it to fit really tight. So we're gonna clean it with the sander here. Ah! 
inside the hole, we want to clean that out too. Being we didn't make that hole, it was already there, so you know it's going to be rusty in those edges too. So just use a flap wheel in there to get off any crap that's in there. Perfect. All right. Next thing we're going to do is grab a magnet, hold our piece in. Sometimes it's difficult to weld with a magnet, but they, they work really good for holding stuff like this. I mean, you could clamp or whatever you got to do, but magnets work excellent. The welders tend to act weird next to the magnetic field, I guess. I don't know how all that works. Electricity, science. But that'll keep it flush where we can just get a tack and then we'll get rid of the magnets and then finish welding. So let me get out the welder. Got our TIG out on these edges. Like I said, you want to make sure this is a perfect edge. We're just going to put two tacks, one on either side. And, uh, but we want to make sure those are exactly in the, you know, perfectly even. Then we'll take the magnets off. We can take the hammer and, and make sure each tack that we put on, it's perfectly even. So we got no low spots. That way it would be very little filler or anything we have to do. Sharpen the tungsten up. I'll leave it out about a quarter inch. But uh, make sure you sharpen that up real pointy. It's nice and clean and you'll fire right up. We'll fire that welder up, Rob. Dolly behind it. We'll do each one. We'll set this up. Every one of them is 100% perfect. don't have a dolly, you can use your ball peen as a dolly and it works really good sometimes. Sometimes it's perfect. That's pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and sand these tacks down. I'm going to flip that fender over and put it on top of this and lightly tap it with the ball peen. We're going to make that 100% perfect. car but that's perfect now so we'll go ahead and weld that up all right so Ryan's side has a couple more holes he's got to weld up but we're letting that cool so we don't warp the metal too bad um, so we're gonna go to this part here which is going to be MIG welded and what you want to do first is set up your welder we've done this before and we just got some scrap the same stuff we're using to patch our hole here and uh, we'll see what we got Start off. We, we could have got it pretty close, but we'll see. It's pretty good. It's a bit hot. It's stuck to the table. So Ryan, if you can turn that down, let me see if I can knock this thing loose. Well, we welded it right to the table. <laughs> All right. So that's that's hot. Can you turn that down a bit. Turn it down. Okay. Lesson learned. It wasn't as close as we thought. I always cut it off fresh. A lot of people just go for it. So let's try another one. Try the other side here. That's that's pretty good. It's probably a little warm. We'll do that. Now you're gonna be welding in open air, not on a table, which will act as a heat sink, which will 
change how it welds. So we can just set this thing across like this and make it open and dial it in a little closer. That's pretty good right there. Sound good to you? Sounded beautiful. That's right. Good. All right, so we're pretty close here. I think it's close enough to do what we're gonna do. Let's get onto that. All right, so we got our welder dialed in pretty good. It should be pretty good for this here. Now, on this, we're doing the complete opposite of what Ryan did. We're building the, the we built the part already, and we're gonna cut out our hole to fit the part. So, I've kind of, I've already built it just like Ryan did, same thing. But now, I've got it lined up, I got a little mark there. You can mark it so you kind of know where it goes when you're, when you're building it. Because this, this uh, radius goes this way and this way. So it took a little bit to get that pretty close. So what we'll do, we got our hole, I'm gonna line it back up. Mark all the way around it. Now we'll cut that hole out, and this will fit in there. And I'm going to use safety glasses. <laughs> Scary! This is just a, uh, a burr, burr wheel cut off. Uh, they call it several things, I call it burr wheel. Okay, we're getting it pretty close. Now, with these things, I, I, when I'm trying to cut away that much material, I kind of go the opposite way of the, the flow and it seems to dig in deeper. And you always want to keep moving because otherwise you'll dig into a hole and it'll just lock up and it sucks. Then when I get close and I fine tune to get close to this edge, I kind of go with it. That way it just kind of kind of wants to flow with it. Okay, we got it all dialed in. It's really close. Actually, you could probably, you could TIG this, but we're gonna, obviously we're gonna MIG it. So, but again, like Ryan said, you wanna have a clean surface. Even if you're MIG welding, a lot of guys are like, ah, it's a MIG welder, I can weld right through it. You can, but it won't be as good of a weld. It makes it, it's, makes it a sloppy weld. So we'll clean it up and we'll tack it in. Uh-oh, glasses. Safety. Ah! Pretty good. Now we'll just, uh, Get it back in there, I kind of remember about where that mark was. That's gonna work. You can, instead of the magnets, another trick you can do is just take some tape. Stick it in place. That'll give you enough to get your tack on there. Okay, we got it all migged up, and as you can see, it's a, it's a little harder to finish off when you mig because you obviously leave all these spot welds here. Um, but we can handle that, and then we'll get to finishing Ryan's side there. I'm just gonna grind this down with the grinder, and then we'll hammer it up. Okay, Rob's got his side ground down. I'm gonna go ahead and grind this down. Being we TIG welded, it's, you know, it's just a little bump on this side, so we're not gonna use the heavy grinder, we're just gonna use this pad sander with some 80 grit on there, sand that out, get it get it close, and uh, don't forget, when you sand this, you're gonna wanna sand the back side as well. So once we're done sanding, we're gonna flip it over, hammer this out on the, the anvil there. Obviously, if you're on the car, you're gonna have to use a hammer and dolly, but you be able, you know, it always sucks in. The more you, you can hammer this out till it's 100% perfect, like it would never be there. You might have to go back and forth sanding and hammering a little bit, but you'll get it perfect. Okay, you can see, well, I sanded it flat. I held the sander flat like we talked about in the, the grinding video, but 
it's touching here, it's touching here, it's, and it's just not really getting down here. You don't want to dig down into these edges because you're just going to make the metal real thin. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip it over and hammer out the weld all the way around here just so it's up high enough so that way I can sand it where it's nice and sh it's straight across. Even if I go too high, that's fine because we can just, when we put it back over here on the anvil, we'll be able to flatten that out right out. So let's flip it over and uh, hammer away. I got this all sanded down and hammered out. It looks pretty good. Now we have two more holes to weld up. Want to get that welder on, Rob? Oh, I see. I'm the welder turner on guy today. You're doing an excellent job. Jeez. <laughs> so, one thing when you're welding a hole like this, it's a, oh, it's not a blind hole, it's just a hole. Right. But uh, to fill that in, you could, you could kind of work your way around the edge, and that's pretty difficult to do, even with a TIG. You can take a piece of aluminum. Or like I have a brass hammer. It's actually it's nice because I got a handle on it. Brass but you can hold that behind there and weld around it, not to worry about it falling through or pushing through if you're using a, a MIG or whatever. And the weld don't stick to the aluminum. Yeah, the weld won't stick to the aluminum, and it makes it quite easy. I'll just have to blind myself. There you go. So I got it all lined up. I'm going to close my eyes, and you can weld it. Don't shock me. Good idea. <laughs> Shocking. Should we do that again? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> One done. It's getting hot. Go figure. So if your buddies help you, make sure you give them a glove to keep your hand from burning. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Now, we'll grab the smooth that out and grab the DA and kind of get it all finished off and looking good. Look like a new one. Ready for the cow look. <laughs> Got our piece all, fender all smoothed out here, da it all up. You know, we use uh, 80 grit to finish all that. It just comes out real nice, and the DA will actually smooth stuff out as well, so it uh, works the, good. the reason we did this back one like this and that one like that is there's two different ways. This one, the one Ryan did, you can get to the bottom. Like, even if this was on the car, you can get to the bottom and work it and whatever. But this one here, if you're on a panel where you couldn't get to the back side, on a door or whatever you can't get to, um, you can only go from the outside. So what you want, you, that's why you make the hole fit the part, because you can just cut it out and do, work, do everything from the outside. And you won't be able to hammer the back like you can right. to make it straight. But, but it's still a lot easier if you got a lot of bends in your part or whatever. It's a lot easier to take that part, go ahead and get it as small as you can and everything, you know, it's going to fit it. But that way you can just lay it over it and trace it. Sometimes it's just impossible to try to make that part fit. Yep. The hole you got, you know, with gaps and stuff like that. Just take your time. You'll yeah. get it. So, hey, if you like what you're seeing here, subscribe. And uh, we appreciate all you guys coming out and watching us. And... Well, if you don't, then we're just going to keep throwing these parts away. Dude! We can fix that. 